What it is, what it do, cyber world, it is your girl, the one, the only, Ash Said It, Ash Said It.com, Ash Said It.com. This is the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning into the program each and every day. You know, we got some empowerment, some enlightenment going on and ways to make you smile. You know, your circumstances not determine how far you can go in this life. So today I've got a treat for you guys. I've got former NBA superstar Joaquin Hawkins, who has played in over five different countries, which consist of China, Taiwan, Japan, Philippines, and Australia. He is one of the most, I would say, inspirational stars to come from that time period. All right, so from the 2002-2003 season in the NBA, he achieved his biggest goal, which was actually making it to the NBA with the Houston Rockets, and that was a huge achievement for a young man, for any person, as far as the NBA goes. But to have him to to do that, that was really amazing. And he continued to play for quite some time with the NBA in Japan and Australia. But also while playing in pro ball in Australia, he suffered a devastating stroke that changed his life forever. Joaquin Hawkins, how are you today, sir? I'm pretty good. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for making time for us in the program. So, Joaquin, before we jump off with anything, let everybody know where you're from. What city do you represent? Yeah, I represent Linwood, Linwood, California, um, which is uh, right next to, to Compton. And um, born and raised, born and raised in California, so that is my hometown. Um, I currently live in Fontana, uh, okay. but uh, my roots and all my friends and family are, are still in my, my home city, which is Linwood in Compton. Absolutely. So walk us through a little bit as far as your aspirations as a child. Were you always wanting to be a basketball star? Um, it didn't start off that way. Um, I just love to compete. You know, um, mm-hmm. you know unfortunately, I, um, I grew up without a dad. And mm-hmm. so my, my uncle, it became my, I guess you'd say my father figure. Right. And he was a good athlete, uh, six foot five, 230 pounds. And, uh, I mean, he was just, you know, the guy that I played with every day. And I always went, went, went to go see him play doing his little recreational basketball leagues. And his, he would play a team in college. And um, he was my inspiration. I wanted to be like him. And mm-hmm. so any chance I, I got to play against him, four, <laughs> five, six years old, you know, I'm thinking I can beat this, this 30, 30-year-old <laughs> man. And so the, the competition was just in my blood and, you know, with him teaching me everything I knew um, at that time, it, um, it just progressed to where I, uh, I felt like maybe one day I, I can actually can, can be a professional athlete, and, uh, you know, I was able to achieve that dream as well. Absolutely. Now, you were in a few of the minor leagues. What was your yeah. what was your mindset as far as, you know, every, everybody obviously playing in the minor leagues, you want to get to the NBA, but I would imagine yeah. that going through – um, so many challenges in, in playing those minor leagues. What did you do right. to keep yourself motivated and pumped up? Well, it was it was basically a, a, a daily, I would call it a grind. I mean, every day I was grinding because I knew the pinnacle of me, of, of why I was doing it, was to make it at the play at the highest level in the NBA. And so, I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was tough. You know, I, I was playing at times for $500 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, playing in, in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, I mean, traveling to, to play in these small cities, hoping that one of the NBA scouts was able to see me and see what I can help out an NBA team with. Right. So uh, it was a, a daily struggle, challenge. and uh, But I knew at the end of the day, and, you know, my, my mom and my, my grandmother and my uncle always told me anything worth having is uh, definitely worth uh, working for. So I, I knew that going into that it would probably be a long journey. Um, I didn't know they would take that long <laughs> of a journey, but um, I knew that um, you know, just the more I worked and that the better I got daily, you know, that was the, the vision that I saw and that was the light that I saw that if I continue to do this, you know, it, just, it just would take one person um, from the NBA to give me the opportunity, and um, I was able to get that opportunity in 2002, 2003. Absolutely. So what do you remember about signing that contract? You know, it's it's signing day, the cameras are flashing, yeah. there's lights everywhere, your family's there supporting yeah. you, and everything's going on. What do you remember about that day? Well, the, the 
the first thing I remember is, you know, just the support from my mom and my uncle. Um, unfortunately, my grandmother passed away my senior year in high school, and so I knew she was looking down, yeah. um, you know, at me and, and just being thankful that I didn't give up. And so that yeah. was uh, the first thing because, again, it was times where, you know, I was cut from certain teams. Uh, I, had, I had to try out with the Los Angeles Lakers and the Clippers, and I played six or seven games with them, but I got cut from those teams. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, the 12 years before I made the NBA, playing overseas, playing in China, playing in third world countries where, mm-hmm. you know, I'm eating beef and rice every day, mm-hmm. all those moments, you know, it kind of settled in and it let me know that I, uh, I arrived, mm-hmm. that, you know, all the struggles and the challenges I had uh, was worth it. And so I just remember obviously thanking God. I remember crying like I was a baby. Mm-hmm. And I just, it was really a so surreal for me and, um, you know, having that moment with my mom to, to, to let her know that I achieved my dream. It was it was the, the, the best accomplishment, one of the best accomplishments that I ever had. Absolutely. All right, and the stroke of grace, what was the motivation and the driving force for you to write this book? Well, it's, it's um, the way I started writing the book was really a way of therapy. And um, I um, once I had a stroke, it was definitely life-changing for me. I mean, I couldn't play mm-hmm. basketball anymore. It affected my memory. My right side um, was affected. Um, my speech. I mean, everything that, you know, I want to say we don't take for granted, but I, I didn't realize how important it was until I had a stroke because now, you know, it was issues that I was having. I couldn't say my alphabet. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't read a sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I just wanted to make sure that I could, continue to recover because I didn't know how, uh, what type of disabilities I would have. Um, you know, I read about the strokes. I kind of knew about, you know, what happens when you have a stroke, but I didn't know the warning signs. So when I was having my warning signs, yeah. um, it was devastating to me because, you know, all I'm thinking is my body is deteriorating. You mm-hmm. know, I'm, I'm not myself. And so um, after I was properly diagnosed, um, I used uh, my book starting just, just as therapy, trying to remember the good things that I had in my life because of a lot of things that I just, I just forgot. And it was because mm-hmm. of me having a stroke. And so, um, you know, one page ended up being 10 pages. 10 pages ended up being 100 mm-hmm. pages. And the next thing you know, I had 400 pages of, of therapy. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it helped out because it was a way for me to kind of vent out also because I had a lot of things that was, you know, going me emotionally. Yeah. And um, I just remember my, my wife said, you have all these pages. Why don't you just make a book? And the first thing I'm saying is, no one's going to read my story. <laughs> you know, um, mm-hmm. everyone has struggles, but but hey, I you know I um, I, I married a, a very smart woman. Yes, and so you I did. ended up uh, taking her advice and uh, cut down the pages. And so um, you know, Stroke of Grace was 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 established. And um, now you know, I've had several people from different countries. Mm. You know, send me Facebook messages or Instagram messages or just emails just thanking me for giving them inspiration. And, um, you know, the book is not just about, you know, um, my childhood, but I talk about all that, coming from a single-parent home, not knowing my dad. Um, I never wanted to use that as an excuse to find some success, Mm -hmm. not having a dad in my life. And uh, my mom was a strong black woman. My grandmother also very strong and encouraging and you know, just having a good support system helped me achieve my goals. And so uh, I, talk, I talk about that in my in my book and my journey to the NBA, not making it, you know, paying, like I said, playing for about $500 a month. I mean, all those mm. sacrifices yeah. and then obviously having the stroke and dealing with the, um, uh, the aftermath of, of not being able to be normal. I didn't feel normal. Yeah. Um, emotionally, I was, I was struggling, even spiritually. And so I just talk about all my struggles and going and going through all that, uh, but it made me the man I am today, you know. And um, you know, I was in, in, inspirational, and I'm very um, confident of, of where I'm at in my life. And I know a lot of other people in life, you know, they have these struggles and these obstacles, and they don't know how to deal with them. Yeah. And you know, I felt like my story, all the things that I went through, it, it would be able to just help them, inspire them, give them some hope. And yeah. um, that's what I've been able to to hear as uh, the feedback from my from my book uh, thus far. Absolutely. Well, first off, I, I salute you. I tip my hat to you for 
being uh, as courageous as you are to to share your story with the world because we know every a, a lot of people are going through things but not everybody is willing to share it and um right. a young lady she oh my goodness i can't even think of her name i was at a conference a few months ago and she said you know what you go through is not just for you to go through it's for you to share it yeah. with others you know uh, what we go through in this life you know there's so much things that's just pulling us in all different directions and, and designed to break us down but we cannot be defeated um and second off i definitely i i tip my hat and i i salute your wife because i know i've been a full-time caregiver for several family members throughout the years and people think oh well it's just because that person is going through this they're the one dealing with no Everyone around that person is affected, um, right. whether people want to recognize right. it for what it is or not. So having, yeah. you know, yeah. the stress of, because I believe you have three daughters, correct? Three daughters, yeah. yeah. When, I, when I had my stroke, my uh, my daughters were five, three, and one. Mm. Um, and, you know, I talk about this in my book where it was just very ironic because during that those ages, my daughters were just learning their alphabet. Mm. And so when I um, had my stroke, as I said earlier, it got so bad where I didn't know my alphabet. So I had to, yeah. my wife was teaching my alphabet, to teaching you. my kids their alphabet with me. With we you. were learning our alphabet together. Wow. And it, it was uh, really a trying time for me because, you know, it made me feel less, less, lesser than a man, lesser than a father. Uh, but my wife, she, she, she had my back. And yeah. uh, not yeah. one day that she wavered to uh, to help me in my recovery. Not one day um, that, you know, she was always there. She yeah. was always there pushing. And, I mean, it got to the point, and I talk about this also in the book, we, we became homeless um, yeah. after I had my stroke because I couldn't work. Um, I lost our savings. So we were actually living in a hotel room. Yeah. It was my mom, my wife, and my three daughters, and we were living in a, you know, in a hotel room for about a month and a half, you know, just trying to get our life back together. And, yeah. you know, to have a wife like that, that, you know, that don't think about leaving you, that don't yeah. think about yeah. saying, hey, you did this to us. I mean, she, she stood by my side, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful for God uh, for, to have a woman like that in my life. Absolutely. Like I said, that that's a blessing within itself. It really is. Yeah. So, Joaquin, yeah. today, what gives you joy? What gives you joy today? My my joy is life. My life, my, my joy is teaching. Um, I develop a youth basketball program, which is called Hawk Hoops, uh, here in California. And, uh, I mean, to, to see the kids having the same inspiration I had when I was their age. Right. You know, I'm you know, very blessed to say I'm a former NBA player to have uh, a, a wealth of the knowledge of and experiences playing against the best coaches in the NBA, best coaches in the world. Yeah. And I can give that gift to these kids mm. and to, to see them smile every day. Um, we, we play in a lot of youth basketball tournaments, uh, one we have coming up this weekend, our stroke awareness tournament. But to see them every day at practice, you know, motivated to, to, to achieve, to want to be better than they were the, the prior day, um, that gives me joy, you know, because it lets me know all the journey, all the obstacles and challenges I had were worth it because now I'm the, the example they need mm. so that they can move forward and be the best that they can be. Um, so that gives me joy. And obviously my family, I mean, my, yeah. my, my, my wife, my three daughters are the love of my life, uh, my mom, my friends, um, but everything in life, I mean, everything that's, that's, uh, that's living, you know, because I, I know at any, any moment, you know, that, that moment could be taken away from us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely can. Now with this podcast, we're getting, I get a lot of people that are maybe stuck in a job, they're in between things, they've got all kind of yeah. circumstances and bad situations going on in their life, and they feel like they're just at the end of the rope, they can't make it, they're not going to be able to achieve yeah. that goal. What advice or what words of wisdom would you offer any of these people that are listening to this show right now? Yeah. Well, for one, you know, um, prayer does help, you know, mm. prayer and, and, and having a belief um, it's something that is mandatory, whether it's a belief in God, a belief, belief in yourself, um, just believing in, in having, having hope. Um, uh, secondly, being able to adapt to a situation is tough because, you know, we, we, we all, we don't want challenges in our life, mm. but we have to understand that challenges are who, what makes who we are. And adapting to our challenges, getting through them, and just
it's fine in a way. And it might be not might not be the best uh, alternative for you, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And just not giving up. Just not giving up because when you feel like you can't move anymore and you just take one step forward trying to accomplish something, you know, another door can open. Mm-hmm. And um, so I just, I just say definitely take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you got to have the belief in yourself and, and knowing that you can overcome. And it might take time. It might take a month or two or years, but you just you can't give up on yourself because, again, it's only one of, one of you. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that can be um, accomplished if you just have the belief in yourself and what you are about. Okay. Cool, cool beans. Joaquin Hawkins, thank you so much for being a part of the program today. What is the best way for people to get in contact with you or if they need to get a stroke of grace? Where do they need to go? Yeah, yeah we're out. Yeah, our, our website is strokeofgrace.org. Um, so that's strokeofgrace.org. Um, you can purchase a book there. Actually, I'm going to, this month, I'm signing, personally signing books that are um, being purchased on that website. So you can go to strokeofgrace.org. Um, the name of my program, again, is Hawk Hoops. Um, and you can go to hawkhoops.org uh, to check out our youth basketball program. We do camps, clinics. Uh, we also do fundraisers for uh, other programs, and we do a lot of collaborations um, because at the end of the day, we all are, are here to help kids. And, um, you know, so I'm very much into helping other programs and other organizations um, achieve their goals. Um, and then um, you can follow me, obviously, on Facebook or Instagram. My Instagram handle is uh, Coach Hawk 247 because uh, I feel myself I am a, a coach 24-7 of the day, <laughs> 24-7. <laughs> is my handle and in Facebook it'll just be my name Joaquin Hawkins and I also have a stroke of grace um, the Joaquin Hawkins story Facebook page as well absolutely Joaquin Hawkins thank you so much for being a part of the show today we appreciate you so very much we see more and more good vibes good energy and who knows that biopic might be coming to a theater near us soon and very soon we gonna Uh, claim that Jesus (laughs) make it happen But I appreciate you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of the show today. And thank you all for downloading the program. Thank you. We are a quarter of a million downloads worldwide. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so very much. Remember, keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you cannot do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. All right? Because that's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books. Social media is nice, it's fun, it's cool, helps us keep up to date on stuff, but real life is so much better. All right, until I talk to you guys next time, deuces.